what to say. So that <laughs> again, technical difficulties, man. Oh gosh. Always something. Mm -hmm. It's always something. Always, always something. And your mic is cutting out on you. I know it is. I hate that. No, no. Okay. Mic's working now. Um, all right. Testing. Of course my mic is cutting out. What the heck? Great. Hello. Hello, John. Can you hear us this time? Hello. Hello, John. <coughs> We're on our end, but not on his end. Hello. Oh, weird. Okay. Wait a minute. We're gonna have. Uh, come on. Okay. This stinks. <laughs> We're experiencing technical difficulties right now, guys. But again, welcome to Apocalypse Otaku. It's funny because we're actually here on a Saturday. So how fun is that? <laughs> Hello? Hello, John. Uh, why is my speaker off? Why is that? John, can you hear us? Microphone is not picking up. Uh, good lord. Uh, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Uh, we don't know either. It's. Speaker off. I don't know what that means. Why is my speaker off? Uh, speaker's off? Speaker's off. Huh. That's weird. Okay, we see you. Hello? 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 Can you hear us? This is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what my problem is, and maybe on my okay. end. I don't know if you can hear me. Give me like five, ten minutes, and I'll be home. All right. Yeah. And I can do this on okay. my computer. All right. Thanks. Oh, my God. Yeah. Technical maybe difficulties, we everybody. Maybe we On this one? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, then we'll take it off the air. Got it. Here, go ahead and just click that one off. Clear that one off. Do you remember, do you remember your password? Yes, I remember my password. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Hello, technical difficulty. Yeah, it's not fun dealing with technical difficulties. Stinks. Smells like rotten beans, okay? <laughs> Okay. And take that camera down so he can see both of us. Uh, okay, I'll have to move it. Do -do 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 -do. Mm. Well, see, I don't know if. He's gonna gonna be able to see bo both cameras. So. Well, that's for everybody out there. Yeah, everybody out there seems to. Everybody out there is seeing us. Yes. Hello. And our technical difficulties. Yes, our technical difficulties settles. So so we're yeah. gonna have him soon. I promise you. Yeah, this is not a hoax. We. Reached out to this man, and let's see. So, we really technically don't need the Elgato anymore for that, obviously. Well, I don't even have it on. Well, I'm going to take it off of here because we don't need it. And the mic keeps we cutting out. <laughs> I don't get it. Why does it not like me? <laughs> okay, and then... Actually, now i got to pull up that dumb video again. 
don't need loop back, do we? Or cuz I really don't want to download some weird thing on here. Oh, this is for maps. So. Yeah, cuz we don't have a map. We got PCs at the moment. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> this is really fun. Um, I press R to do something. In the meantime, for those of you who are tuning in, we are <laughs> trying <laughs> to get in touch with Mr. John Swayze. Yes, yes, we are. Uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, he's a voice actor who has acted at... Uh, He's been in what, Full Metal Alchemist. He was Hohenheim. Uh, Soul he Eater. Was in Soul Eater. He was in Soul Eater. Um, he played Lord Death. And um, he was in Neon Angel. He played Grandpa Miwa. Um, and he was also um, Sir Crocodile in One Piece. So He's been in lots of shows. He has. He's been in tons. Um, okay. And he He's been voice acting for 20 plus years, y'all. So, just going to have to give him the kind of respect that he deserves. Yes, because we should respect people that have paved the way in that way. Let's see. Okay. Um, you signed in? Yeah, I'm signed in on here. Um, now, let me make a call. Uh, let me call ID, Skype number. Really making me go through all this crap. Just want to make a call. That's all I want to do. Um, message. I do not make anything easy on the internet. You just let me make a call. That's all I want to do. Ireland? <laughs> I'm not doing any of that. I just want to make a call. That's all I want to do. Let me make the darn call, please. I can't even do this call. Come on. It's going to sound like such a video for Emmett. you. What? I keep telling you anyway. Call from an airplane tower. That's a text message. Text this because you Skype online. Yes, I know that. I know. There we go. That's it. Who wants to work? Joy cannot be used for emergency calling. Well, duh. Okay. There we go. Um. All right. Um. Sorry about it. Okay, I mean, how is my sign? Right there. What? Where? Right in there. You can call him on it. Oh, my God. Where's my call? Uh, you can call him on it. Just press that one. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> my thing is it won't be able to show up on here.
Hello? Uh, this sucks. See, look, it showed the audio right here in the microphone part, and we don't need What's that. We don't need this part. We don't need that audio part. Because that's through the Elgato. So we'll disable that. Apply that. Because this is the Elgato speaker that's right here. And that's what we need. What's the other one? This is our, these are our mics right here. And this is the desktop. And then this is the gamer. And then the studio cameras. And then this is the Elgato. <laughs> they don't make technology easy anymore. Like, at all. And the only way we'd be able to hear him is going on that computer. But, for some reason, it just doesn't want to work with us. You want to kind of try it again, or... Alright, let's see if it'll work. Because this time we can't hear ourselves. No, nah, because if we can't hear ourselves, then it's not working. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, people can't see him right there. See, now it's through the desktop now. Hello? Oh. Can you hear me? Nothing is working. And this, I'm really getting upset about this. We are. Hey guys, we're really upset about it right now. Chrome tabs. Jeez. Hello? Hello? Oh my god, why can't you hear, can you hear me? John, are you there? Can yes, you hear I'm us? Here. What? <sighs> oh, what does that mean? Can you hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Here. Let me ask him. If I can find my question mark. Okay. God. Hello? John, if you can hear me, we are so sorry about this. Um, can you hear me? They didn't really give us a lot of to go on. Can you hear us? No. Hey, we're having problems. <sighs> um, we tried hooking it up to El Gato, you know, El Gato, like you said, and it, it's not working. It's not wor working. He, we could hear him, but he can't hear he us. Can't hear us. Should I use the gamer headphones? Cause he's are he's getting frustrated. And so are we. Okay, um, we'll try it with the gamer headphones and see if that works. Well, we even tried hook hooking it up to the computer and it's not hearing us he's not hearing us
because we're not the first ones to use Skype on here. Because uh, there's been a lot of people on there. There's been a lot, there was a lot of phone calls made on the TV screen when she signed in. A lot of sign-ins, in other words, yeah. for Skype. Okay. Okay. All right, bye. <sighs> well, she's full of it. Or I could just really just have to call him up on my phone and we're just going to have to ask some questions that way because we can't really do anything about it right now. Again, guys, this is so unlike us and... This is just not our day today. Hi, this is Char. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's computers, what can I say? They're not working. <laughs> oh, not too bad, how are you? Oh. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I put you on speaker? Okay. All right. Actually, I can put you on camera. Awesome. Even better. Is that okay? All right. <sighs> okay. Well, I guess you can't somewhat on I camera, guess you can't re or I guess you can't receive video calls. That kind of stinks. Here, I'm going to take off my headphones too cuz I don't need them on. No, I'm on an Android. Oh, I have an iPhone. Here. Okay. Here. Um I got it. Here, um read me off his number. John, I'm going to FaceTime you, my dear. Here. Bye. All right. So we got something. We got something. We something. Put the camera back on. Put the camera. <laughs> I the have the cam camera right here. Yeah. Okay. Here. Hold on just a second. I got to get my stuff all together. We're going to do something. We're doing we're, something. We're doing something, y'all. We're doing something. <laughs> just don't know what it is. Okay. All right. So what is this glorious man's number? Oh, 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 oh. You wrote it down, didn't you? It's right here. It's top number. Okay. Wait, hold on. Two, eight, one. Now, don't read it out loud. Sorry. <laughs> it's only the first three. <laughs> we'll have everybody in the United States calling him. <laughs> what in the world? Why won't it? Okay. Here we go. All right, we got him. Give me your phone. Here. Give me your phone. Here, here, here. I got you. Get it set up somehow. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hello, Swayze. Mr. Swayze. Finally. I know. Oh, we are I'm doing good. We are awesome. We uh, hopefully everybody can see you. 
<laughs> yeah, I had to wheel in here. <laughs> here, maybe put it. Maybe you could try to put it long ways and then leave the camera down flat, somewhat. Yeah, like then he'll just be long ways. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Just position the camera like a different, like try to make it turn it up or something. So. Okay. We'll do it like this. <laughs> you got it. Um, tilt it up just a little glare. There we go! Sweet! All right, all right. We're good. Somewhat good. <laughs> I'm like out of frame, but either way. All right. You're like really noticeable by the camera. <laughs> but either way. <laughs> oh, gosh. We had a Other than massive technical difficulties, we are doing great. Yeah, we are awesome, sir. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, yeah, my daughter. Here, I'll show you real quick. Hello, I'm also here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's, That's Olivia's way to eat. It was a voice actor. Oh. oh. Wow. <laughs> Runs through the bloodline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I went there. <laughs> here, I'm going to be over here. Okay. All right, for those of you who don't, those people that don't know who you are, uh, would you, would you like to introduce yourself to them? As he takes a swig of his drink. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if you don't know who you are, that's a problem. Well, I know who I am. I know who I am, too. <laughs> we met you. Yeah. Yeah, so my name, is, my name is John Swayze, and uh, I'm a, a voice actor based out of Houston, Texas, where I worked uh, here at Sentai Filmworks. Um, at uh, Funimation and at Gearbox and have done a little work for Rooster Teeth as well in Austin. So, um, and I also direct uh, anime and Sentai film works and I've uh, been doing this for about 20 years. Sweet. Awesome. Um, I guess some of the roles that uh, you may know or may not know, I guess. Um, Currently, I'm playing uh, All for One in My Hero Academia. Yeah, um, yeah, yep, yep, we know. <laughs> we love I'm My Hero. Hohenheim and Full Metal Alchemist. Loved you in Full in Brotherhood so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I play uh, Lord Death in Soul Leader. I just ordered my Maka costume not too long ago. Excellent. <laughs> um, I play Undertaker and Black Butler. That I did not know until I, I Googled you it. Were in that show. I Googled it and saw it. I'm thinking like, oh, he played Undertaker and uh, Black Butler. Okay. <laughs> I play uh, I play Kumatetsu in The Boy and the Beast, a film by Momoru Hosada. I watched that. That was the best movie I've seen. Thank you. Anime wise. Thank you. It was, a, it, was a, it was an honor to work on it. The visuals so. were amazing in that movie. It was mm -hmm. breathtaking. Um, I also played Crocodile in One Piece. Yep. <laughs> Dodorio in uh, in uh, DBZ. Dragon um, Ball. Mm -hmm. DBZ Kai. He's one of those funny characters. He's in he's in a lot of episodes. He just never says anything. Oh, so he's it, I know he's pink and looks like a blowfish with spikes, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then um, I've uh, done some video game work. The, the the biggest one, though, I've done probably is uh, Borderlands 2, where I play Salvador. Nice. I don't so. play video games. <laughs> I, play, I play some. I just don't play a lot. I she wish, plays more than I do. I wish we can shut that, because that's giving off a lot of glare, but we can't, which stinks. Right. Oh. So, what do you have for me? What questions do you have? Um, my, I have a lot of questions, actually. We both do. <laughs> Um, if you had to do, you know, the voice acting all over again and knowing what you know now, would, uh, would you still have chosen voice acting as your career path? <clears throat> Absolutely. I, um, not only would I have done that, I went to college in Tennessee and if I knew then what I know now, I actually would have moved from when I graduated from college moved down to Atlanta 
and tried to get a job with Cartoon Network. Mm. Doing doing anything. <laughs> Eventually, maybe getting to land a show or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's what I would have done differently. Or, or uh, move straight out to L.A. Mm. But I went out to L.A. for a little bit, tried to be a film actor, and um, I just, you know, I've got the face for voiceover, I guess. So, um, <laughs> don't, you know, but uh, I love voice acting. I really do because it allows me to, uh, hang on one second. Okay. It allows me to uh, act, which I love to do, but it allows me to do voiceover, which I also love to do. But I mean, I love doing characters um, and I love doing commercials. I love doing all of it. It's, it's not just, I love one aspect of it. I love doing uh, every aspect of voiceover that I possibly can. So whether it's doing a character in an anime or doing a video game or something in an original like I play um, El Rey in uh, uh, a show called uh, Nomad of Nowhere from Rooster Teeth. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's still going, but um, it was an original content thing. And I love doing that. You know, you get to create the character and, and all that kind of stuff. This is my dog, by the way. Say hello. Aww. Yeah, so his, cute. His name is, his name is Tybalt. Tybalt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from Romeo and Juliet. Aww. No, Hamlet. What kind of dog um, is Tibble? Like, is he Tibble a nice breed? Is or? A, he's, a, he's called a Walker Coonhound. Oh, Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> he's black and there he is. Oh, he's beautiful. Uh, For those yeah, of you he's who a good like boy. dogs, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Come here. That's a good dog. Um, how has voice acting changed or enriched your life, both as an actor and as a person? How it has enriched my life? Well, um, it's helped pay for my kids' school. So that's one way. (laughs) That's Um, always good. But uh, it's, um, it's, you know, it's just given me the freedom. I mean, when I graduated from college, I, you know, wanted to be a a stage actor. And then when I started to do, I love stage. I mean, there's nothing, nothing against that. But then I got into, started doing film work and then, I got into uh, voiceover and I just realized, wait a minute, I really like this. This is, this is fun. And um, I seem to have, you know, somewhat of an aptitude for it. So um, it just, for me, it, it kind of helped define um, what I was meant to do, I guess, in life, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing that I love about voiceover is, uh, and the way it enriches my life and whatnot, is that it allows me to do a lot of things that I wouldn't normally be able to do uh, on the stage uh, or on film because of just the physicalness required. So, you know, I can be uh, uh, a scrawny little something or another. I can be a big bombastic, you know, character. Um, It just gives me a lot more opportunity to uh, really stretch myself as an actor. So... It's been, yeah, it's been fun. I mean, I, you know, there's still so much more I want to do, but um, I'm getting there slowly, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> do you consider yourself self as someone who uh, does what he does for the sake of art or someone who does voice acting for some other reason? Well, I consider myself, uh, I mean, I, I do it for the money, you know, there's <laughs> not going not gonna, not gonna to mince words about it. It's how I make a living. Of um, course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's also a, certainly a component of the art form in there. I mean, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's not something, it's not rocket science, but it's not something it's everyone like, can do. It's like a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm eating a piece of cheese. Um, what kind of cheese? A Vardy. <laughs> hey, I have to ask the man what kind of cheese you're eating, and he gave me an answer. A Vardy, a Vardy, my favorite cheese. Well, we'll have so, to um, remember but, that. Yeah, I mean, you know, at one time, I had a uh, a friend of mine said who's a very actually very successful actor out in L.A. right now, 
and one time before she went out there, she was talking to me and she said something about, you know, doing commercials for radio spots and stuff. That's not really art. And she was kind of, you know, going on about the art form. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, it is. It is an art form. Not everybody can do it. No, I shouldn't say that. Not everybody can do it well. There are lots of people that can do it poorly and lots of people that do do it poorly. But not everyone can do it well. And uh, I think, you know, if, if you if you treat yourself like an artist, then it is your art. And if you think about it, really, no matter what you do in life, um, you can think of it, think of it as this is my art. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I think anything you have a passion about that you do, that's your art. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And it could be anything. It could be sales. It could be a doctor. It could be a lawyer. It could be anything. I mean, you know, we throw around that term. Well, he is a he's a true artist. You know, but it's somebody that just has such a passion for what they're doing. Uh, number one, they don't let anything stop them from doing it. Mm -hmm. And and number two, they're they're trying to push the envelope to uh, to do it in different ways and and create things that are new and fresh and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, definitely do it for the art and the money. Money's always good. Money yes. helps you yes. hell in the long money, run. Money helps you. And, and, you know, and there's some jobs you do that it's really just for the money. But oh, yeah. that, enab that enables you to sometimes do that and then have enough money where now I can go do something that's purely for the art. And I don't have to worry about the money because I already made some, you know. Okay, so what originally got you into acting? Uh, I was at a, in New York with my family uh, in 1981 or 82, no, 81. And I uh, went to go see some Broadway plays and one in particular called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I saw That's on Broadway with you. Yeah. It was the original Broadway cast. And uh, somehow my parents scored like orchestra seats Ooh. and it was their closing night and the energy was just electric. And I just remember telling my parents afterwards we bought an we bought the album back then you didn't get cds you got albums of the soundtrack and uh i was just like this is what i want to do the rest of my life so i've never made it to broadway in fact i didn't even make it back to new york till i was 50 but um uh it's just that acting that expressive that form of expressionism um it just captured me and, and lit, lit a fire in me and uh, so, yeah, just in fact, I bugged my parents the whole rest of our trip. I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be an actor. And they're like, yeah, we'll <laughs> so. just, just wait and see. I will be. Like, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, what advice do you have for pe for people wanting to be a voice actor? Uh, take acting classes. <laughs> there you go. You kept mentioning that I all told time. you. <laughs> You know, it's a, it's a very standard answer that we give, but it's mm -hmm. the truth. I mean, it's voice acting. It's not just I have an interesting voice. It's it's like uh, if you go to my website, johnswayze.actor, I've got a course on there that's like 25 bucks to watch these videos. And it shows you and teaches you all these things that you need to know. But um, watching those videos is not going to make you a voice actor. It's, uh, it's like me teaching you how to play the guitar you may have a, a vintage guitar but that doesn't mean you know how to play it and i can show you chords i can show you scales i can teach you a couple of songs but that doesn't mean you know how to play them perfectly mm -hmm. it takes practice rehearsal uh learning continued learning continuing education you know i had a, a guy tell me one time i was in new york uh, about a year ago and i was doing a panel at a convention and Somebody said, hey, I have a question. I'm like, what's your question? He goes, well, I've taken a six-week acting class for voiceover. I said, oh, okay, good. He goes, what's your question? He goes, well, what do I do now? I said, take it again. <laughs> he, goes, he said, but I've already, I've already taken it. I said, so, take it again. He goes, but I've, I've already taken it. I'm ready to move on to the next thing. And I'm like, well, the next thing is taking it again. You're not yeah. ready. That, that's, you know, again, this isn't rocket science. But I studied acting all through college. I took classes after college, and I've been working on my craft, and I'm still working on it. You know, it's it's something you never not work on. 
And to sit there and go, well, I took six weeks. And it wasn't six weeks of every day, mind you. It was probably one day a week. So you've had six classes. Well, don't tell me that you're ready to go because you're not, you know. Um, and it's it's insulting, really. So I said, you know, don't just go take it again. So um, I would just say take acting classes, continue to take acting classes. And then uh, you need to put together a demo reel, uh, find an agent if you can, um, and then start marketing yourself. You know, getting the, getting your word out that you're available, and you know, if you don't have a studio, hook up with a studio, that kind of thing. So, but if you if you want to do anime per se, you need that's to be, what she wants to do. Yeah, you need either you need to be in Dallas or Houston, or at least in Texas somewhere, and willing to travel to one of those cities. I got family down in Texas, so yeah, there you go. I have to think of a, I got to think of a game. But. But you would, you know, you, uh, it's a long process, you know, I happened to luck out. Um, and when Sentai, which used to be called ADV films started in Houston, they were I looking know, for, I'm, I've been <laughs> watching it. You know I've been watching it ADV. Okay. Well, they had, they were just looking for actors and I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. I had no idea what anime even was. Um, they're like, oh, you're great, man. So I started doing all these different characters. It was years before I really realized what was going on. And, um, you know, back then the market of people was so niche and so small. You know, I never even watched what I had done. And, um, of course, now, as you all know, it's it's just huge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, becoming, yeah. I mean, becoming more mainstream and. Uh, you know, more people are getting into it, and um, yeah, it's really exciting. My son's into it. You know, he loves it. <laughs> although, although one time I was, I came into his room and I said, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, "Watching some anime." And I said, "Oh, what do you want?" He's on his phone. I go, "What are you watching?" And he goes, uh, "I'm watching Attack on Titan." I said, "Oh, you know, you know, I'm I'm in that." And he goes, "Yeah, I'm watching the Japanese version." Uh, <laughs> oh, title guy. But to his credit, he did say, he goes, that's the only thing that was available on Amazon or Netflix or whatever uh, it was. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't have the dub version. But I was, you know, of course, as a dub actor, I was like, no, that doesn't fly with me. No, <laughs> there you go. So. Okay. Do you have any questions? Um, I did have one. Um, so, basically, Colleen Clink and Beard and Justin Cook recently said that they are bringing back One Piece. They're dubbing it after the, I think it was Ragnet Punk arc. How do you feel about that, since you were part of One Piece for the first collection of seasons that they had? Yeah, no, I'm all for it. I, I voice uh, Crocodile, as I said. I also voice a character named Gonfall, and uh, I just finished a bunch of work on it. I mean, I'm you know, that means more work, so... Uh, we're always thrilled when they bring back characters that, uh, or bring back shows or that have, um, uh, that have, um, your character in it, you know, <laughs> it's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm, I can't wait to see what's going on, you know, now stuff like that though, you know, we don't, as actors, we never know what's going to happen. We're not told months in advance or weeks in advance or anything like that. Uh, about, you know, what we're going to be doing or anything like that. We usually get a phone call. Are you available next next Tuesday? I'm like, yeah. For what? For One Piece or for My Hero or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, it. We're, we're kind of kept in the loop, but on a very much a need-to-know basis. So um, it's always interesting to talk to fans because they – very well have read the manga or something like that and they're they're you know they're way ahead of the story than i am you know they know what they know what's coming now, i remember one time i was talking to somebody and they were like <coughs> pardon me they said um mm -hmm. well are, are you excited about what's going to happen with uh with undertaker and i said well, no what do you mean oh man wait till you <laughs> see what's gonna happen. like okay well then about a month or two later boom you know it's this huge 
huge thing. So it was funny, but yeah, I'm, I'm always thrilled when, uh, uh, you know, these new story arts get picked up because I heard, I heard a rumor. I don't know how true it is, but that, uh, they were maybe not going to finish dubbing one piece. Because I don't think it was making enough money or, you know, whatever. It's expensive to dub. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not just something that everyone does because they love to dub. It's, it's, it all, no matter art or not, it always comes down to the dollar. Is it profitable or not? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but apparently they, they decided that it was worth it, which I'm very glad for. So, um, uh, anyway, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so. Um, let's see. So we got a couple of conventions possibly come. Well, actually, we have conventions here in Ohio. Would we actually be willing to come up here if we ended up requesting you? We got Ohio Con and then Matsuri Con up here. Uh, yeah, you can certainly request me. I would I would say if you're going to request me, uh, do so through Ohio Con. I was just at Matsuri Con this past one. Yeah, we got a Matsuri Con here in Ohio, too. So there's like two different. No, I know Matsuri. I was there. Oh, you were? Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. I was there. So if you wanted me at the next one, it would have, you'd have to ask Ohio Con. Yeah, they have. They don't make it easy to request people. They yeah. don't. I do a lot of my own requesting. Mm. Like, <laughs> I request you have me. Mm. But that's the way voice actors are. There's so many people doing it, and, and you know, you have to just kind of reach out to the conventions and let them know you're available and if they want to have you they'll have you if they don't they don't mm-hmm. you know it's a hit or miss kind of thing but my goal is to if i can do it like one or two conventions a month i'm super happy if i can do one a month i'm really happy if i can do two a month i'm ecstatic but that's about all i can handle <laughs> yeah that's, that's you know, understandable i got a family and i like you know i don't want to be away and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff so yeah. You got any more? Got any oh, more? yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, for the people out there who don't know the differences, what are major different differences between st- stage, on camera, and voice acting? Well, it's all acting, number one. They're just different mediums. Um, oddly enough, I would say that stage acting and voice acting are more akin to each other because... Um, in voice acting, oftentimes people put on them head, headphones and they hear their voice and they start they start talking like this, and the voice gets really soft because they can hear themselves, and they get self conscious and they, they think, oh, I, I sound terrible. Um, when in fact, they need to be big, you know, uh, just like you would on stage. Mm-hmm. Film film is a lot different because it's all right here, you know, and um, you can do a lot of things without saying anything. You can do that on stage too, but uh, film, you know, the camera can be right here. Stage, it's your, you know, even the closest person uh, is 15 feet away. So, or depends on the stage, I guess. But I mean, uh, it's tough to get away with just facial things and stuff like that, like you can with film. But, the, the main element is, or the main key ingredient with all of it is it's acting and it's being real. It's uh, not, you know, it's voice acting is not about being able to do funny voices. You know, it's got to be funny voices that you can get across as authentic and with the emotional level. So it's like, I think it was, uh, I don't know who said it, um, I want to keep saying Mel Torme, but it was Mel Blanc. Who did a lot of the you know Looney Tunes stuff? Yeah, Bug Bunny. Yes. And somebody said to him one time, "Is like, hey, I can do a great Daffy Duck." And Mel Blanc said, "That's great, but can you do Daffy Duck reciting Shakespeare?" <laughs> oh, that would be that's interesting. One, would love one of my favorite little, little quotes. Yeah. So they're you know they're all different, but they're all the same. They're all connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, which one do you do you enjoy the most? Voice acting. Voice acting, then theater, then film. Mm. And it's mainly because I love voice acting. Theater, though, you get the live uh, reaction from an audience. You get an immediate gratification. 
and then film is just hard. I mean, you could do, you know, you could do this perfectly timed comedic scene or a very emotional scene and you pour your heart out and they go, okay, that was great, but we had, you know, the boom was in shot. We got to do it again. All right. Well, I hope I can recreate that moment. You know, it's tough. It's very hard work. I, um, yeah, I was actually watching a show and they actually had the boom in the shot and they didn't reshoot it. I was like, they didn't catch that. They <laughs> didn't catch that. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't catch it. I think there's a, Oh brother, where art thou? I think it happens. It's a, one of the Coen brothers movies. They, uh, they have a boom in it. I have to go back and watch it. I haven't seen it, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny when stuff like that happens. Um, how has the entertainment industry changed since you've begun your career? Well, um, you know, I'm just in a small fraction of it, but I would say most notably what's changed is the, um, the, uh, proliferation of the internet and how things can get delivered. Um, you know, we didn't, yep. mm -hmm. you know, when I watched it, when I started doing anime, uh, you got your your shows on VHS tapes. Yep, I remember tapes. that. I still have you some. Only, you'd only get like <laughs> you only get like two two or three episodes per tape, and they were like twenty five bucks a tape. Yep. So to watch a whole season, you know, you're talking about one hundred and twenty five bucks. Mm hmm. Whereas now, for five ninety nine, you can go to High Dive, or you can go to Funimation Now, or whatever theirs is called and join and stream anime all the anime you could ever possibly watch for oh, five yeah. bucks a month mm -hmm. yeah and um you know dvds were were a big change that was i think that's that became kind of a golden age because uh everybody had vhs but then they wanted dvds and because you could pack so much information on a dvd they would release and re-release like it's evangelion now on dvd Evangelion, the reboot, Evangelion, the director's cut, Evangelion with new extras, you know, and it was just people, oh, I got to have that one. I got to have that one. You know, it was great. But then once the streaming started and people still buy the DVDs or Blu-rays, you know, because uh, they want to have the physical in their collection kind of thing. But I don't have you know, all of them. But but for yeah, I mean, that. but but for people that just want to watch it, you just stream it, you know. And, and we live in an a la carte world, you know, where you're going to be able to have Disney, you're going to be able to have Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Hulu Crackle, you know. Crunchyroll. Um, Crunchyroll, yeah. Crunchy Funimation, Senta, or High Dive. You know, pretty soon, though, uh, now you're spending, you know, you're back to spending $100 a month. But even $100 a month isn't that bad for all that stuff. Yeah, because you, know, you get to watch as much as, as you, want. you want to watch. Literally per month. Yeah, you're just going to have to, but you know, for me, you just kind of have to pick and choose because I don't have enough time to watch all the content, you know? That's yeah. the other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of changes do you predict for the future? I'm sorry, predict. Uh that the actors will actually come to your living room and perform it right in front of you. <laughs> oh, I would love be a, that. Be a hologram. Oh, holo oh. She's a big Todd Habercorn fan. Uh, <laughs> Todd is yeah, hilarious. Todd's a good guy. He is hilarious. Todd's a good guy. We actually did an autograph session on Unlocked with him, and he called me a manic person. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> And he saw our little uh, sound board that looked like a Game Boy. And he well, first I called her, called her a manic friend yeah, because she was friend. acting all out there. Hey, hey, that is a normal fangirl reaction. I'm sure John's probably experienced that before. Yeah, I fangirled on Todd. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it here, right here live on Twitch. John Swayze has fangirled over Todd Hapricorn. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's fun. <laughs> now is this being recorded or is this live this is live this is live <laughs> oh. exciting 
<laughs> well, I was going to say, I, I've, I've got only time for a couple more questions because i got to get okay. going. Okay. That's, right. yeah, that's um, I like to watch the commentary, commentary sometimes. Those are fun. And if I remember right, on one of the videos, you said that you don't remember... Uh, you've done so many animes that and anime characters that you don't remember uh, what role you, you did first. Well, I know the very first show I ever did was Golden Boy. Ah, um, I don't remember the character. It was it was a small bit character. It wasn't anything huge. Um, and actually, um, I kind of got the reputation. Because uh, I started when I was in my 30s, late 20s, early 30s. Um, but I did it sound young enough to be the leads, like a Greg Ayers or Chris Patton or, or uh, Todd, you know, that have that younger sounding voice. Um, yeah, because I, I remember and, you were in Dean Angel. Yeah, right, Dean. I played, I, and I, played the, I played the grandfather. You know? Yes. <laughs> but I, I, I started... Um, I kind of got a reputation in ADV for being able to do a lot of different characters. So like where somebody might come in and be the lead on a character or on a, on a show, I'd be like five different characters in that show. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, you know, it, it, it afforded me a great uh, opportunity to really stretch as an actor and do a lot of different things. And according, apparently according to anime news network, I'm the most prolific male voice actor in North America. I don't know what that means. Other Steve, than, uh, well, Steve Bloom, Steve Bloom was he held that role for a long time. Well, now Steve Bloom, Steve Bloom has done like, I think he's got the world record for video. Games. Yeah. He's in the Guinness book. Yeah. This is just on anime news network. It's like the number one is Monica Rial, then Lucy Christian, then me. Hmm. And it's for, for voicing anime roles specifically. And it's just because, ah. Just because back in the day, I got to do, uh, there just weren't that many actors, so I got to do a lot of the roles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in every show, if I wasn't a main character, I was like 10 different characters, and they're all listed. So that's that's what that meant. You know, it doesn't mean I've done more work than anybody or anything like that. It's just kind of a, a silly little moniker I get to wear. But, you know, that... And, that and five dollars will buy you a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, one final question: What projects are you currently working on? If if you can tell us. Well, yeah, there's a few that I'm working on that I'm really really excited about. Um, I just finished directing a show called The Pet Girl of Sakura So uh, at Sentai, which is a really fun show. Um, and uh, I've got a bunch of shows out right now. Uh, Review Starlight. Um, uh, just because, um, uh, Snafu, which I can't, now I can't remember the whole name of that, but anyway, a lot of shows. Teenage be, Comedy if you, Snafu, was that it? That's, thank you, that's it, yeah. She's, so, she's already watched it. Yeah. I, it was, I just know the title of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a fun show. I, I was doing a lot of, for the last year, been directing a lot of, um, teen angst type shows. Uh, so that's been, that's been a real treat. I've worked with some amazing, amazing actors and just had a blast. Um, but, uh, yeah, a couple of things that I'm working on though, for me, um, well, let's see, there's, there's a few things. Number one, uh, I'm a, we finished it and we're trying to get a children's book launched called Jungleberg. It's the, the book is called Jungleberg children's reading community and the first book is called zeke gets glasses it's about a spider monkey named zeke who can't see well and he keeps swinging into things so he goes to the eye doctor and uh spoiler alert i guess here but he goes to the eye doctor and he needs glasses and now he gets glasses he can see but he makes new friends and all this but these are for children and uh, the goal <clears throat> pardon me the goal is to uh create a series of these and then eventually get them animated and make a cartoon. Fun. Okay, so, so if yeah. You, if you go to junglebird.com, you can you can check it out and see. And we're getting we done an audio version of it. We've done a you know that, but we're going to launch that soon. And uh, very excited about that. Um, in fact, we're going to have a very special limited edition 
uh, the first 500 copies are going to be autographed by myself and my co-worker, my partner on it, and by the illustrator. So uh, it's going to be really neat. And then um, also um, working on a movie called The Perfect Con, uh, mm. K-H-A-N Con, and we're trying to get that to market, trying to get that distributed. And uh, if not, we'll put it up on a website, hopefully, and have tons of people download it. And so, oh, and then, of course, I have my uh, anime convention in Dallas coming up uh, at the end of November after Thanksgiving called Anime Dallas. Mm. And uh, it's, uh, we did it for the first time last year, and it was a huge success. We had a little over 2,000 people show up. And uh, I was very, very excited. And this year, we're still a month away, and we've already got over 1,700 pre-rich. So um, nice. I, th nice. I think we're going to topple 2,000 pretty easily. So I'm very, very excited about that. And then what we did last year was um, we gave money uh, to an organization to help with Hurricane Harvey relief. Mm. We did about $8,700 to this organization, which for our first year, I was very, very happy about and then this year, um, <clears throat> we're going to uh, offer money uh, to an organization. I haven't identified it yet, but it's going to be for um, victims uh, of, you know, sexual assault and uh, things like that. So, um, you know, we're all about love and, and mm -hmm. getting along. And, you know, one of the things I've always loved about the anime community is, in general, is that, you know, Nobody's there to judge anybody. Nobody's there to make fun of or bully or anything like that. It's a bunch of a bunch of nerds and whatnot <laughs> that all love each other. And so and I think that the world could take a lesson from how people behave in in our world. I mean, it's you know, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, yeah. You know, nobody nobody cares if you're straight, gay, bi, whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. You know, you could you could walk through a convention and wearing nothing but shaving cream and people would go well that's pretty cool cosplay <laughs> oh man yeah. oh so, man yeah. i'm just I'm, I'm very excited about that so uh yeah that's that's kind of what's going on right now with me okay just um okay one last request um if you do come to ohio if you come to ohio con would you be willing to sit down in here in our studio to do it properly instead of doing it with us and also give us a bit of a shout out as well um and, sure yes of course awesome yeah give us a shout out um kind of like you know if you do come to ohio and we happen to see you would you be willing to come in and do an interview with us and sit down and we well, would actually get to have more interaction with you and also sure. of course can you like give us I a shout you. out now while we're kind of streaming with you right now before you before you we sit yeah. you off and well, yeah, but Jeff, tell me what you say. What am I? What What is your show called? Apocalypse Otaku. Oh, Apocalypse Otaku. Oh, just like it, just like I called. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. This is John Swayze, and you've been listening and watching me on Apocalypse Otaku. Awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so you much. so much, John. All right, guys. And we thank you for your care. time. Yes. Sorry for the problems. Yeah. You have Not a, a problem great, at all. Great rest all right. Of your day. Cheers. Bye, John. Bye, bye. Bye. That was John Swayze, ladies and gentlemen, and man, was that fun. That was great. That was amazing. So, we didn't get a lot of people, um, you know, to comment questions with John, but either way, John Swayze, you are a awesome, awesome guy. You are and, awesome, man. Yes, you are awesome. And so this is huge for us. Our first interview had some few bumps in it. Yep. But we made it. We made <laughs> it first, through it. And... Our first successful interview. Here, you can put the camera back up now. <laughs> yeah. Our first successful interview with the legendary John Swayze. We thank John for his time. Um, out of his busy day, a few busy minor Busy Saturday. Yes, busy Saturday um, for tuning in with us and dealing with uh, two nerdy girls that had their wishes fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, do you have that list that you told me about uh, last night, or was it just on there? The list of potential people we would like to have here. <laughs> yeah, it's right here. 
All right, I'm gonna read off the names here. Give it here. Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm going to read off the names so they so they know who they are. <laughs> so they know who they are. Yeah, so they know who you they know are. who you are. You know who you are. Okay, so the potential people that we would love to either have on Skype. Let's hope it's having better issues than we did the last time, or yes. possible FaceTimes, or possibly to come into the studio here at the Ohio Media School. Travis Willingham. Colonel Mustang, Chris Patton, Alucard, Greg. Chris Patton was not Alucard, wasn't he? No. Then who was he? Because you should know. <laughs> he was in Bleach. As who? As I... I... Kakumata Rame's friend. Oh, the guy the with guy... the funky eyebrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we he's, love... he's a really good actor. Trust me. Very good actor. Mm -hmm. Okay, Greg. Ayers. Ayers. Oh, what Greg the, Ayers. What are the Hitachi twins? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also known as Goku and Sayuki. Mm hmm. Um, Steve Bloom. Yes, Steve Bloom. Mr. Steve Bloom. Mm -hmm. Johnny Young Bosch, Mr. Ichigo and Power Ranger himself. <laughs> yes. He's done, he's done lots and lots of roles. Mm hmm. Lucy Christian, our uh, Uraraka, Christian. and Honey Senpai from Orin High School Host Club. For those of you guys who know who she's voiced, even um, Nami from One Piece, which is getting their dub back. So Lucy Christian is going to be just as busy, probably as Mr. Swayze as well. So who knows? Um, let's see, Wendy Lee. I'm pretty, you probably know more about her roles oh than I do. Oh my gosh, she has done so much. Just name uh, a few. She plays um uh, uh Yoroichi. Oh, oh, she voices uh oh. <laughs> she directed Bleach and played Yoroichi. To think she her character won our all female battle royale way back yes. when and she lost to Meliodas. <sighs> ah. But she was hey, she was uh, you know, you know, there in the battle. Mm -hmm. She was. So. Yep, she was in the battle. Um, Troy Baker. Yes, we would like to have Troy. I, Baker. I wanna, I wanna send this out. Okay. Troy Baker and Nolan North. Both oh yeah. Both of them together. That's gonna be a handful. <laughs> Trust me. I. You don't think the other the um, other two that are gonna be um, located down here that I see, um, uh, Ian Saint Clair, um, Ian Saint. No, Claire. you don't. You have to watch Retro Replay to understand. I have. You showed me Retro Replay. And I've seen them. We won't get anything done with those two, <laughs> as well as Vic Manana and Todd Hapricorn. We won't. Okay, if. Yeah, Troy Baker and Nolan North come in here. We won't get anything done, and we won't get anything done with Todd or Vic in the studio either. That's because it, cause I'll be talking to Troy, and you'll be playing video games with Nolan. Yeah, I will be. I will be dog mouthing. I will be bad mouthing him as I'm destroying him. <laughs> like I'm taking you down, North. <laughs> Just beating at the controller. <laughs> but either way. Um, we have mentioned these two, Vic and Todd. We have mentioned you guys, what, like 50 plus times? <laughs> at least. <laughs> at, least <laughs> at least 50 plus times. Um, but either way, we both know you guys are busy, busy, busy people. Busy, busy bees. We all know, well, I at least know this, that Todd is actually in Anime NYC. He's in New York right now. And the cause not until my, next week. I think my mic is a little bit loud. It's loud? Here, I'll turn it down. Yeah, I had, that I had to turn it up a you, bit. Yeah, you turn it up a bit for John so people can hear him. Um, yeah, Todd's in uh, Anime New York um, right now, and then Vic is at Mega Minicon in Dallas right now. Sweet. Yes. For those of you that are in Dallas right now, enjoy Vic Mignogna. <laughs> but soon we will have him. <laughs> Okay. Maybe, um, maybe. Maybe. Let's see what the cons up here take him. I don't know. They I want them to take him. I don't I don't know if people are writing. I am. I am. We both are. For you Ohio 
Ohioans. 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 <laughs> Ohioans. Yes, say, right, say Ohioans. Ohio, right, Ohio Con. Please. Because the I would say I'm not trying to be rude, but the panels, the guests that they have right now, I don't even know half of them at all. Get people that we know, please. Yes, please. Michelle Ruff. Who 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 did she voice? Only Rukia. Right. Wait, and she and, and she was Luna. And... Luna from Sailor Moon, the cat. I remember her I remember her now. She voiced Luna because I remember her voice. Gosh. Hey, this is it's, Michelle Ruff. It's been forever, okay, since I watched Bleach. Step off me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Vell, better known as America from Italia. That I know him from and a bunch of others. Oh my gosh, he's he was in Jormungand. Yeah, I did see that in his uh, little resume. I think, and even John Swayze he's like was Casper. in Jormungand. Casper. Casper. Mm -hmm. Crispin Freeman. Now that's our That's Avatar. a voice I want to hear. <laughs> Just let him read the phone book. <laughs> Just let him be the phone, read the phone book, and I'll be fine. You'll be okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. Chuck as the Huber. voice of Alucard. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck Huber. Yeah, we like to have a good old Chuck on here. And then let's see. Can you read my handwriting? Um. Okay. I got the Richard part. Escar. Ri Richard es Epcar. Epcar. I couldn't tell what that was. I'm thinking like, what is that? <laughs> He's done lots of voices. Okay, Richard Hayworth. Yep, he played uh, Kenshin, uh, Kenshin Himura in Rurouni Kenshin. He was also in Bleach. Um, he's played lots of characters. As of oh, he was in Trigun as Legato Blue Summers. Hmm. Okay, um, let's see. Lex Lang. Oh, he's in just about everything. <laughs> it's literally like almost everybody on this list. So, yeah. Um, Patrick, is that Schwartz? Switz? Oh, Patrick Seitz. Seitz. He's the guy that played Sloth. Oh! Oh, yeah, the big... With no uh. voice modulation whatsoever. That is pure Patrick Seitz. Mm-hmm. Dave Matranga. Yes. Our little Todoroki. Our icy hot. <laughs> Sanzo. Mm -hmm. He was also an orphan. And the Chevalier Dayon. Mm. Um, let's see. Richard George. Uh? Yeah, Richard George. Yeah. Did you read that right? Yeah, Richard George. Or Richard, yeah, Richard George. Richard George. You wrote it. <laughs> you should know what you wrote. Okay. Richard George. Richard George. <sighs> and I see a lot of Thorntons. I see Sparky Thornton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all his, uh... Here. Uh, see all the Thorntons. Let's see. This man goes by many names. <laughs> Sparky? <laughs> he is, Kirk? <laughs> it's either Sparky or Kirk or Sean Thornton. Either way, we want to, we way want we to want, hear. He's been in a lot, just about, just about every anime <laughs> you can think of. And Yuri Lowenthal. Mm -hmm. He played per Pip Bernadotte in mm. uh, Helsing un un Helsing Ultimate? Mm hmm. Mm. Well, those are all the names we are putting on blast right now. Well, Todd and Vic, we put on blast <sighs> way too much. <laughs> way too much. Yeah, but again, we want them here as much as probably everybody else that watches our, you know, watches our YouTube channel as well as try to tune tune in on Twitch. But either way, um, for those of you guys who don't know. We are on Twitter at Apocalypse Talk One. We are also on YouTube at Apocalypse of Taku. We are at 48 subscribers right now. We are halfway towards our 50 subscribers. We're trying to reach 100. So, 
Subscribe, like, share, everything in between. Because sharing is caring. It is. And also, as John Swayze pointed out, write your conventions in your local area if you want to see the people you want to see. Yep. Because if you don't, they're just going to pick some random nobody that probably <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Ohio Con. <laughs> Pretty Come on, Ohio Con, get some people that we know. Please, because we do not have. Okay, half of the people I don't even know were literally on that list that were for this year. I really don't even know half of them. I'd rather <sighs> see someone else that I know, but that is our. Voice actor slash actress celebrity wish list. <laughs> yes. And it'll That's be our growing. Christmas list for this year. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> if only Santa could bring us those people. But he would. We who knows? We he might. He might not. But again, they're all busy and on Vic their own a schedules. Promise. Vic did promise, and then so did Todd. So we're. Well, I, I'm not talking about that. So we've been good, I promise. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vic told me on his uh, stream, I think it was on the 20th. If he's in them, there are parts. That's what Todd here. said. That's yeah. what Todd said on the 17th. If he is here in them, dark parts, he would come. And then Vic would say, Vic told me when I first talked to him on Unlocked, he said he would make me a deal. If... Any of our anime brethren or sisterins or sisters would spread the word that he would possibly be appearing, he would come. But again, Vic, we're respecting his wishes and we will give him time. We're not going to rush him because mm -mm. we respect Vic Manana and all of that. We're not going to bum rush him and try not with Todd either, but... Who knows what goes on in that half Asian man's head? A lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> oh, a lot man. of things yeah, that lot sh probably shouldn't be going on. No, he just talks a lot. I was what I was watching a video of when he was at Colossal Con from this year. So, because he did say that he was at Colossal Con this year, um, so. You know, we got to make sure we request him and Vic as well at our local cons here as well as other places. Your voices are mandatory when it comes to cons, everybody. You decide what you want to see. Sure, they'll probably have some people already picked out, but it's really the cons are really for us. Cons are for the fans, y'all. Mm hmm. So if you want to see your voice actor, you got to request them. Bug them on Twitter. Do something. You have to bug them on Twitter. You got to send them a letter. Facebook. You got to do everything. Bug them until they cannot stand you. Bug them until they cannot you. stand it anymore. Mm -mm. That's what we've been doing. We've been yeah. putting um, Ohio Matsuri on blast as well as um, Ohio Con as well. I even uh, mentioned it to Colossal Con for heading into next year. We want our Hapricorn and our Minyana. Bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm, but either way, we already know our tsunami schedule for this week because you read it already two days ago. Yep. <laughs> and I didn't bring any of my manga readings, but either way. That's okay. That is fine. We did what we set out to do, and... Yeah, we We're came. We're gonna bid you adieu. We came. We saw. We conquered. We talked to John Swayze, and it was awesome. So he was awesome. He was amazing, despite all of our technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. He was nice enough to continue with everything. Yep. So make sure you guys tune back here on Thursday at three. PM Eastern where we will be back here at our normal time talking about the one thing we love the most and that is anime, anime. and Marvel and everything else in between. So Oh and the mass singer will be back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And we'll be bringing 
will be bringing two hours of the mass singer with us on Thursday. We're not going to show the mass singer. No, we're just going to watch it at our own homes. Gonna, <laughs> I suggest that everybody watches it at their own houses. Or if they're not caught up, YouTube did a little streaming special about it, and they recapped the first four episodes. So, or if you have Hulu, just go on there and watch. So, watch it. Discuss it amongst yourselves, and then we on Thursday we will discuss it with you and see which <laughs> character gets unmasked. So that or it is, could be two characters, seeing as how well maybe, it's a two it hours. Might be three. It, it's a two hour special, so it might be three characters, seeing as how that's a th this it's is a the two third hour week, and it's a two and it's a two hour special this time. For yeah, for this coming week. Well, the first week, one was a two-hour special. Well, this one is too because they missed a week. Two weeks. Yeah, so that's why they're doing it for two hours. So this is the third week, so there might be three people unmasked. We don't know until we watch it this coming Wednesday. So again, guys, make sure you guys subscribe to Apocalypse Otaku. Like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, follow us on Twitter at Apocalypse Otaku One, and. Again. Sharing is caring. Very Come on, people. So. And also, write your cons. And watch anime till you die. Bye, everyone. Bye.